This is Christopher, the Forest Pharmacy, and today we are going to be pouring Petri plates. So right here is the stereoclave or the pressure cooker behind me, and it was like 20 degrees last night, so everything was frozen in here, all the water. So we're heating it up. We poured, um, we put auger, uh, auger recipe. This one is uh, DFA auger into these two flasks. Uh, 20 grams per 500 mils of water and so we preheated this water before we put them in here to keep the thermal shock from breaking the flask uh, however they're really good at not breaking but I didn't want to put the boiling water into ice um, so we're gonna stick we'll sterilize this for 45 minutes at 45 minutes at 15 psi and then we will allow it to cool down enough so that we can pour it into uh, petri plates so basically we're just going to be putting the putting the lid on here and um, and then bringing the temperature up so we're back in the lab we've sterilized the the auger um, it's been about an hour since we cut the stereoclave off uh, and now we have a sterile sleeve of petri plates um, these are perforated so it makes it a little bit easier uh, make sure that if you're opening these, make sure you do that like this in a sterile environment. So we have two uh, Erlenmeyer flasks with 500 mils of auger in them. And so that will be approximately 20 plates. So each one of these sleeves is 20 plates. So I split my plates down to about 10. Actually, these are 20, I'm sorry, these are sleeves of 25 plates. So sometimes, um, sometimes you buy them that are 20, sometimes they're 25. Anyway, so that's that's the first setup is we set all of our plates out in front of the flow hood like this or whatever aseptic environment you have. Okay, so you can see we have all of our plates out. Um, and so this is two sleeves of plates. And so a lot of times if you didn't mix enough auger, uh, you have plates left over. So what I do is leave one of my sleeves on the table until we're done to make sure that we don't have any, or if we do have any excess uh, plates that we cannot fill, we can slide them back into that sleeve and wait until the next time that we pour plates. So this is, it just, you know, just recently quit boiling. It's still really hot. Uh, the media bottles I do not like because they're very thick, um, they're very thick, thick Pyrex, and they hold the heat really well. These do not, so they don't get hot on your hand if you're holding them here. Sometimes they do get hot, but what we will do is take this lid off like this, and then I take a paper towel and wrap around it like this. Uh, that's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna insulate your hands from the heat, but it's also, if you get any drippage, it's not going to run all the way down the flask. It's going to stop right here. So that's really that's really helpful. Um, so if you've got a chair in your lab, that's great. Otherwise, I'm kind of tall, so I take a wide-ish stance. Pouring plates is pretty simple. That's it. And when you're pouring plates, it will let you know if your table is exactly level or not. So we're just filling up the plates enough to cover the bottom. Not too, too thick. Um, it doesn't have to be super thick. And every once in a while, since this is DFA, there's like some chunkier stuff in there. So I'll give it a little swirl every once in a while. You don't want to create too many bubbles though because they will end up, the bubbles will cool and there'll be a bunch of bubbles on your Petri plates. Alright, so um, you can kind of see on this napkin where there's a little bit of drip uh, on there. So I'll go ahead and like wipe off the outside edge of this. 
Um, a lot of people will pour their plates and leave them in stacks of three or three or four because they can only handle picking up that many at a time or they think they can only handle that many. I like to leave them like this because what's going to happen, you can already see on the top of these plates that there's condensation. So you can see the condensation on top of the plate. Um, so to, to mitigate that condensation, you can put your, whatever you're pouring it in, you can put that on top and that will keep, that will keep um, the condensation from uh, occurring on the, on the top of the very top Petri plate in this stack. Uh, this next one, you just gonna have to deal with it. Uh, it's okay. Uh, it's not the end of the world, but it, it it helps a lot to not have that extra moisture in there, because uh, sometimes it does invite contamination uh, if you haven't done your job correctly. Um, so yeah, we've got one more uh, flask of auger to pour, and then we're gonna be set. We'll let these cool down completely, and then once we cool them down. We store them at room temperature in a tub like this. Uh, and the reason for that is, is because I know a lot of people will pour their plates and immediately put them in the fridge. I don't like that because I want to know if there's gonna be anything growing on my Petri plates. So if I put them in a tub and I get some that contaminate, I know I did something wrong as, as opposed to putting them in the fridge and everything looked fine until you start doing transfers from your other cultures onto those Petri plates and all of a sudden you're getting contamination and you don't know where that contamination is coming from. Is it coming from the fridge? Is it coming from the Petri plates that you're using? Or did you not pour your Petri plates correctly? And so this method allows you to cross that off the list. Like, yes, I did pour the Petri plates correctly. And so something happened between transfer, not sterilizing your tools properly, or contaminated cultures of Petri plates.